Welcome back to another episode of this van build. Today I'm going to be building the kitchen framework and everything that's going to be going into the kitchen. So basically I'm going to be building the whole frame out of these 20 by 40 millimeter timber strips. So at the hardware store, these are actually quite expensive. They're about $3.50 a meter because they generally come in dressed timber. So they're looking quite nice. So the way I'm going to save some money on this is I bought these 45 by 90 timber structural, basically a two by four. And I'll strip these down on the table saw to make these. And I can get four of these out of one of these and then it works out to be about a dollar a meter so you do end up spending a lot of money on this kind of stuff so anywhere you can save some money it's good let's get stripping okay so i've ripped down all my lengths and the good thing about doing it at home is you know all the pieces are going to be straight. Sometimes when you buy stuff from the wood shop, they've been sitting in the sun for a little bit and you have to really go through and just kind of make sure they're all straight. The next step is I'm going to cut everything that I need before I start joining everything together. I've designed the whole kitchen cabinet in my 3D SketchUp program. So I know all the measurements that I need to cut and I made a cut list. So I know exactly what I need to cut and how many of. The way I'm going to be cutting it is on my table saw. What I've made for this entire van build is something I've never used before and it's so great. It's called a table saw sled. So this sits on top of my table saw and it slides back and forth and it really allows me to make perfect 90 degree cuts. When you're using a drop saw or a miter saw, you don't really get that perfect 90 degree cut unless you're really careful when you're cutting. It really allows you to make repetitive cuts all at the same time. Um, to get the exact same lengths because I've got so many different pieces I need for them to be the exact same size for this whole thing to be square I need to make sure all the cuts are going to be right. So It's really quick. It just sits on here I'll show you and it slides back and forth. So that's on there now It just runs off the two key grooves that are on the table saw and all I do where I want to cut it Exactly on this little mark and turn it on and just push it through that's it simple as 90 degree cut perfect every time so one of the greatest things about this sled is i can set cuts up to make multiple of the exact same cuts super quick so one of my cuts has to be 540 long so i've just put it on here i've cut it and then i've come back measured it make sure it's right and then i've put a stop block and clamped it on there so now all i have to do is get my next piece bring it up to the stop block and just send it through and then just keep doing that because I need to do this eight times and I need to make sure they're exactly the same. It's just going to save me a lot of time and it's way more accurate. Okay, so I've cut out all my pieces now and now I'm going to have to join them all together. The way that I'm actually going to be joining them all together is with my Craig's whole pocket jig. This thing I bought in Chile when we did the van there and this thing is just so amazing. It's the best and strongest method for joining this type of timber by far. And it allows you to really hide those holes and it comes with a special drill bit with a stopper on the end. You can adjust it to the size that you would and it's really good for butt joining timber. You won't get a stronger join, in my opinion, as easy as this. I end up gluing it together as well as I screw it, just so you don't end up squeaking any wood. Alright, so I've just finished the framing for the kitchen unit. You see I've boxed in here, that's where the oven's going to sit. It needs like a boxed enclosure and then it vents down the back where I've left a left gap. Big pull-out drawer here, the fridge goes here, two kitchen sliding drawers here. My sink sits here so I can't really do much here. I think I might just have a little bit of a, a drawer that opens up and then I'll have my little kitchen utensils. Down here, I haven't actually fully decided what I want to do yet, but I think I'm going to have something that slides out and then has food in it. And then I also need to figure out where I'm gonna put my bin. So I think I might put my bin in here in the, in the top slide out and then the rest will be food. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna start building my drawers. 
I'm gonna be doing that on the table saw just so I can get perfect straight cuts every time. If your drawers aren't straight, it makes your life a lot harder later on when you're trying to put everything in. The other thing to note is when I was actually building this, I wanted to make sure that my edge that was showing here was gonna be the nicest wood I had on either side just because that's the side that's gonna be showing out. I will be painting it anyway and giving it a good sand. There are some other sides with knots in it, so you don't want them showing. So you can see how this system works. Just dry fitting it, but yeah, so the bottom runs through the dado slot. And this is not even glued or anything. This is just totally held together by that slot. And it's pretty strong, just like that. So I'm gonna pocket screw all these together and make some solid drawers. So I've just finished the drawers. Really happy with them. They've come out really good. Makes such a difference when I use the table saw to get all my cuts exactly straight. So I basically got the two drawers for the top, that'll be cutlery and all the cooking utensils and everything. And then I've got this big bottom drawer that's gonna be storing pots and pans and my coffee machine. And I've also got my very first van oven. So I've just mock put that in there for the time being, just seeing what it looks like. And it is so cool, it's the oven. And then it's also got the cooktop, three burners up top, and my sink, what I'm gonna do at the moment. So I'm waiting for the fridge to actually arrive. It's coming, it's been sent in the mail. I'm gonna figure out what to do here. This is what I've come up with with that little space that I needed to fill. Um, I've made another drawer here, slide out. So I'm gonna put food down here and I'm intending this to be a rubbish bin. So I'll half half rubbish one side and recycling the other side and that'll be pretty much cut in half so it's a little bit of room and then the rest will be for food. Now comes the fun part. I've got my hardwood bench top. So this is Acacia hardwood from Bunnings. It's at $99, it's 26 mils thick. It's already oiled, I don't know if I'll keep this colour or I'm going to redo it, but it's going to look really nice. Now I have to cut it. I'm not sure how that's going to go with my Ryobi cordless circular saw, just because it is not that powerful and this is hardwood and it is quite thick. Okay, so I've just marked out my sink and my oven cutouts. Um, the sink I'm going with, I got it on online, it was like 90 bucks, but it's actually designed to be a sink that sits flush with the bench top. But I want to maximize my bench top space because it is quite a small kitchen. So when the sink's not going to be used, I want to be able to put my piece of wood back down on top of the sink which means I have to mount this from underneath. It's not actually designed this one because it doesn't have the holes drilled out. So I'm gonna have to drill some holes in the stainless steel, which is gonna be quite tricky because it is quite hard to drill through stainless steel. And then I'm gonna glue it up from the underside. And then when it's not in use, I'm gonna be able to put my piece that I've cut out back on top and I'll probably be able to use it as a chopping board as well. When drilling through stainless steel you have to use much more pressure and slow the bit right down. So this is an example of using too much pressure. Ah! I 
decided to sand the bench top down to bare timber and apply a high gloss clear polyurethane bench top sealant. I used a foam brush to reduce the amount of brush strokes you would see as I don't have a spray gun. I'm undercoating it with an acrylic white undercoat to get rid of the grain and the knots and then I'm top coating it with semi-gloss white. Next I'm going to make the drawer fronts look pretty with some more stripped down 2x4s. Here are all the fronts for the drawers for the kitchen. So I've just stripped down some 2x4s into 15mm wide, 40mm thick, and now I'm going to undercoat them and paint them. Before I install the kitchen unit, I'm going to create some ventilation holes for the fridge and the oven. I hot glued some insect screen on the vent so no bugs and insects will be able to come in. Next I glued a little frame on the vent so I can attach a small computer fan. So basically the theory for ventilating the fridge, so the fridge sits here and the compressor sits right about here so that's where it's going to get hot and the hot air is going to rise. So I've made a vent hole that goes onto the cab and that'll flow in, come up and then get sucked out by my little computer fan and that's going to turn on when the compressor turns on. So the compressor's actually got its own little intercooler in the fridge, so it has its own little computer fan. So that turns on at the same time as that and cools the whole system down. So the way I've actually made these drawer fronts is I've just made the drawer like a standard drawer with the drawer runners and I'm going to use the front of the drawer and I've just made a, a frame that just kind of goes over the top of it like so, so I don't have to put an insert in here. It's just going to use the original drawer itself. So here are the more or less finished drawer fronts. So as you can see, it's just screwed onto the back with a couple of screws. Except for this one I haven't completed yet because I only just decided what I was going to do with this drawer. Just a little drawer because the sink trap will touch if it's a long drawer. So this is the mechanism I'm using to lock the drawers in place. They're quite cheap. And I've just connected, so that's the female end here. It's just the little rollers, and then this is the male end. And then when the drawer goes in, you can hear it click. So this is the little bit I cut out, if you remember, for the sink. And it is also doubling as our chopping board. So I just routed a little half moon 
around it so all the juices, whatever we're cutting, kind of stays in the chopping board. You can also do it on like that too. All right, guys, that is the end of this video. I had a lot of fun making this kitchen unit, saved a lot of money by the techniques I used. <laughs> Bendy's now back, so I started this video probably three or four months ago, and it's only just been finished now. If you did get any use out of this video, remember to hit the like button below. It's really going to help us out. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video. See you.